Light FM. 106.7 Light FM, Cubby and Christine in the morning, and with us, a guy I feel like I grew up with. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve Gutenberg, ladies and gentlemen. You know him from so many movies, author, producer, director, he's done it all. Steve, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, and I, I also have to say we're sitting here with my wife, Emily Smith, and our little doggy Gracie. Yep. So we're, gonna, we're doing it a family style. This is so nice. Welcome, guys. Yeah. It's nice to have you here. Emily, you have to grab the mic like the old days oh, yeah, when yeah. you did news. Like yeah. Yeah. Do you two are going to share? <laughs> want to share a mic? Hi, everybody. Hello. Yes. Hi. <laughs> I am here. <laughs> <laughs> I have arrived. Has arrived. I cannot believe that Emily is up this early in the morning. I was leaving at about 7.15, and I said, oh, you want to come? And, and Emily's like, uh, no, I'm going to say hi to <laughs> I don't And now it's like the only person maybe that she would come for is you guys. Right. So at 7.15. Well, so yeah. it's a big deal. She's one of the best. I feel like we came Thank up you. the ranks together because I was yeah. um, just starting the morning show here in New York City, and you were just starting in New York doing news. Yeah, Emily was a, a, had a great job, big deal here in New York on the air at ABC and CBS and had a great segment on CBS called Living Large. Where she'd go to all these great apartments mm. and show, you know these famous people's apartments and show off. Emily is—is is that how you guys too. met? You know? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> living yeah, large. I, 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 living yeah. large segment. That would be yeah. great. <laughs> but, you know, I'm really proud. Emily's really accomplished and great news lady, and left a great job to come out west and help me take care of my dad. So. Coffee right. knows we yeah. became friends. I was on the. TV here at Channel 7 in New York and we would be in the car and I would hear Covey on the radio. He was with Whoopi Goldberg at the time. Oh yeah, yeah. You did show with Whoopi, Yeah, right? we did a two-year stint together. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. they would give me shout-outs in the morning. I, we hadn't <laughs> met yet and I would be like, this is so great. I felt so cool and I was, I felt so welcome in New York and then Covey and I, we met and we became like best of friends. He's like my brother. He's mm -hmm. a, I told Steve he's family. So. He's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I'll cry right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then Christine, of course, because Oh, I follow you. along and I see oh. I see how kind you are and well, thank, to all of the, the you remind me of Steve and your kindness. Uh, Steve, thank she you reaches so much. out. They go out after hours with like people what, somebody won something from the station mm -hmm. and you two went with them. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Like, it was yeah. Late oh, one really? night. Thank yeah. you. I think yes, yeah, Steve, I like following you as well and thank you so much, Emily. You too. Yeah. You're really positive without it being like that force. I always tell Cubby, I'm like, look, it's we're human. We're going to have negative thoughts. You can't yeah. force them out of your head. And we've been through a lot. Yeah. But but we move forward and we look forward. Yeah. And you're a lot about staying positive and staying present and looking to the future. Yeah. Steve is holding Gracie Allen as mm -hmm. we speak, actually. Yeah, if Gracie could talk, she'd be like, I want to tell you all about my day. <laughs> That's my day. That's right. I'm Gracie Allen. But Steve, let's get to you. I mean, you are doing something called Tales from the Gutenberg Bible. Yeah. And it's funny. I could ask you about... All all of your career right now, but really it sums it up in the play you're doing. Well, thanks. It's a, <laughs> it's a wonderful memory play uh, starting when I'm 17 years old when I leave uh, my house in North Massapequa, Plain Edge, Long Island, to go to Hollywood. And it's about all the people I've met and the experiences I've had. And it's funny, it's meaningful, it's touching, it's about career, family, love, kindness, excitement, and really about giving. You know, if you give of yourself, you know, that's how your life will start to evolve. Um, and uh, I wrote it at my dad's bedside. My dad's been ill, was ill for a long time. So I wrote it, actually started mm -hmm. about eight years ago and then finished it and had about 300 pages. And a great producer named Julian Schlossberg read it and said, you know, I think this could be a good play. And, um, and contacted David Saint at the George Street Playhouse in New Brunswick, who commissioned it and said, yeah, we'd like to put it on. And it was about three years ago, but I stayed with my dad. Then my dad passed in July, and they called about November and said, do you want to do it? And I said, yeah. So it's worked out pretty well. Wow. So uh, you're working at a, I mean, that's a beautiful theater that it you're is. working you in. Yes. It's great. Yeah. So um, what's your experience like doing theater? Because we do know you mainly from movies. So yeah. um, having that, that exchange with the audience and that energy must be pretty incredible. Yeah, I've done many plays. So... Mm -hmm. The great part of theater is that you get it to do you get to do it again and again. So you get to improve it. The great part of television and film is if you create magic on that one day, it's captured mm. forever. Mm. And that's both mediums, all the mediums have their own advantage. Uh, theater is terrific too because 
this particular play, I can talk to the audience. So if I say, hey, my family moved to Massapequa, Long Island, and somebody goes, yeah. I go, <laughs> you're from Long Island? Right, yeah. yeah. I live a little bit. Yeah, yeah so yeah. that's wonderful. And I've got three castmates who are incredible, Arnie Burton and uh, Kareen Montalban and Dan Dominguez, who play 30 characters each. Oh, my gosh. 30 wow. characters each. Uh-huh. And one Steve Gutenberg. Uh, uh, so you get to be you. I get to be me. <laughs> right. and, um, and we're doing it for another two weeks at the George Street Playhouse in New Brunswick. Please come. And then we're going to do it for a month in Sag Harbor at the Bay Street Theater in Long Island. So we'll be doing that all the whole month of August. Why can't we get this on Broadway? It sounds well, like it's a Broadway that, show. You know, that, listen, it's a, it's a process. So we hopefully will do it in a few more cities. And then if it's good enough, you bring it to New York. You know, New York's the big deal. Mm-hmm. So you've got to be great when we come to New York. And hopefully we will be. Right. I think we will. It's a great show. We get standing ovations every night. Mm. People love it. And it's, it's funny and touching. And um, I think we give a great show. So... I think we do wonderful here in New York. Yeah. And you decided at a very young age, you just you felt the calling to be an actor. Yeah. Well, I, I was 12. Okay. And um, my <laughs> godfather, Michael Bell, a family friend from my of my parents from 10th Avenue in Brooklyn, he became an actor. And he was actually a very famous voiceover, voiceover artist, still is. And he had a great life, and it looked like something I wanted to do. So, so tell us what commercial. Oh, he, he did Butter Parquet. Oh, butter, yes. oh, talking butter? We know talking that one. Butter. That was his. Yeah, butter? that was my th- uh, this 19, was mid-70s, his right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yes. That's right. One of the memories soaked in my head. Right. Yeah, like yes. the movies and yeah. that commercial. And, he and Mrs. A, Butterworth, too. Right. But. Uh, what's that? Mrs. Butterworth. <laughs> Mrs. Butterworth. <laughs> and he did, uh, he did all the kinds of uh, Hanna-Barbera commercials and wow. Transformers mm-hmm. and Rugrats and yeah. stuff like that. Wow. And he became yeah. very, very famous as a voiceover mm-hmm. artist. Probably one of the top ten in the world. And made a great career and a great living for himself. Wow. And he was he had he was handsome and funny and looked like he had a great life. So I said, hmm, I want to be an actor. Yeah, that. Wow. So at 17, you left Long Island. You went out to Hollywood. And yeah. Three days after graduating high school, I went to, out to California for two weeks to become a movie star. Uh-huh. And, well, of course. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah, my father was like, oh, my God, what's going on? So I, I, and within a month or so, I got a, a, a commercial. A Kentucky Fried Chicken commercial, and then I got my father let me stay, not go to Albany State University right away, mm-hmm. and I got a, a couple of TV movies and some small parts in feature films. Did about 15 commercials, and but after a year, I was really lonely out there. The culture just mm-hmm. wasn't for me. Um, actor, young actors are very competitive, and I didn't really make any friends. And I left. I went back to school. Went to Albany State, and I got a call from my agent when I was up there. Um, and Tell what you were doing. <laughs> well, I was up in Albany State. I was studying and smoking a lot of weed. <laughs> <laughs> my man. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the phone rings. <laughs> phone rings. Go, huh? yeah. And I got an audition for, uh, for Boys from Brazil, which is a film directed by Frank Schaffner, starring Greg Peck and Lawrence, Lawrence Olivier wow. and James Mason. I went down to New York, mm-hmm. and I got the part. Wow. I went out to Portugal, and then I got another job in mm-hmm. L.A., and I went back to Albany State, packed up my bags. <laughs> and, you were done. And I was done. Yeah. Like, I'm good and the police here. academy was after that, right? Oh, yeah. Police all academy 24 was, police academies, right? Yeah, all 30 of them. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and police, as Bob Gulfwaite said, police academy bazillion. <laughs> <laughs> and um, No, seriously, off the top of your head, how many are there, though? There is are it, seven. Is it Seven. There were seven. I did four. I did four yeah. out of seven. It dropped off after you left. Yeah. Because I was a fan of every one of yours. Yes. Every time we eat dinner, thank you, Police Academy. Oh, <laughs> nice. Do you um, keep in touch with us? Uh, I know yeah. uh, some people have left us, unfortunately. But yeah. what Bob, is it Bob Winslow? Uh, no? R- Michael Winslow. Michael actually, Winslow. Well, we had him over to the house, and Emily made her spaghetti and meatballs. And, um, yeah, we keep in touch with the guys. Yeah. yeah. I saw Kim Cottrell came to your show, Oh, yeah, right? we just saw yeah, her the yeah. other day. That's right. Uh, right? Kim is such a nice lady. Yeah. And we're going to go to the premiere of her movie tomorrow uh, called uh, 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 Memories with My Father. Um, and um, and Kim is starring in that with Robert De Niro. Pretty cool. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. 
Of nice. all the movies you've done, what do people bring up the most? Is it? Um, I'm very lucky. Uh, people bring up Three, three Minute Men, Baby, right? Bedroom Window, even Can't Stop the Music, Cocoon. Short Circuit, Cocoon. Short mm, Circuit. Oh, that was a great movie. Yeah. Yep, yep. I've got some great seminal movies. And the great thing is my movies play all the time. They are. They are and everywhere. And they stream and they're on, <laughs> on cable. So I'm very, very lucky that that stays alive for me. Yeah. So do you work these stories into your show? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, there's stories about... Boys from Brazil, Three mm. Men, Cocoon, yeah. Because these really... actors you worked with, I yeah. mean, I know that you're wonderful, but you're just starting out, and you're working with Laurence Olivier. I yeah. Mean, Which did was you a... feel intimidated, or you were you were okay? <laughs> no, you know, when you meet people and you work with them, I always speak from my heart, and everybody, that's what we have in common, our heart. So you can converse with anybody if you mm. talk from there. Um, and then I want to be talented. I want to use my skills. But I've always found that really talented people are also usually the nicest. Mm -hmm. And you're able to create a rapport, do your job, and then also have a nice after job life with them. And I think if you're nice and you're friendly and you're kind, you know, life can be good that way. Yeah, I've been loving your motivation on Instagram. You every oh, now and then will do these random thoughts. And yeah. even my sister said to tell you um, when mm -hmm. she started following you, um, she was like really she liked you to begin with but then she loved you even more when she saw all the positive messages oh that's so um, nice like, Thank e you. like even the guy the homeless guy that comes up to you you, you see the same guy every day I think oh yeah or, on the street at, in, in uh, Scottsdale right right and you he knows you you know him right. you gave him you know a dollar here and there and you said something like you know some people frown upon you know giving money to people but I say do it do it the, yeah it's hard to live on the street and a friend of mine, Julian Schlossberg, producer of Tales from the Gutenberg Bible, said to me a long time ago, if they can beg, we can give them money. Mm. And it's hard to be on the street. And what do you it's say to people to that go, oh, they're going to use that money to buy alcohol? Yeah, he buys drugs or he go, and he, or go get, tell them to get a job. No, man. Right. There's a reason they're on the street. I got a funny story. So there's a guy named Alex um, who I used to give money to all the time uh, when we lived in New York. So one day... I, it was Passover. He was Jewish. And I gave him like 50 bucks for the holiday. And I'm online. Actually, it was April or whatever. And Mr. Softy was online. You know, it was March or whatever. So I'm online. And I feel someone big behind me. But anyway, I turn around. There's Alex with a big blanket around him. And I go, hey, Alex. He goes, how you doing? I go, what are you doing? And he goes, uh, I'm online to get ice cream. I go, with what? <laughs> and he goes, Money. I go, the money I gave you? <laughs> and he goes, yeah. I go, <laughs> I go, but you're supposed to buy food with it. He goes, well, I want to buy ice cream. I go, no, but Alex, you're supposed to buy food with the money. I, he goes, I can buy whatever I want with it. And I'm like, no. And then the guy you know, goes, hey, you guys ready? I go, one second. Alex, you got to buy food. He goes, ice cream is food. The guy goes, do you guys want to go? I go, one second. Alex, you got to go buy real food. He goes, I can buy whatever I want. I go, all right, forget it. I had to argue with him. I got up, got my ice cream, and I'm like, then, you know, of course, later on, you know, everyone tells me, it's his money. Uh -huh. yeah. He can do whatever he wants with the money. Yeah. So anyway, my friend Epstein and I go to dinner. He's really cheap. I'm kind of tight with a buck. So he says, there's this great chain restaurant. We can go there and have a great inexpensive meal great so we go there it's down the basement no windows mm. I'm looking around I go Epstein this place is like not great he goes no problem the salad comes and it was that big I mean it was like three feet tall <laughs> like a kiddie and pool. he got like brontosaurus ribs and they were like <laughs> that giant and the food was horrible just mm. the most horrible food you've ever. and I had like two bites I go this is the worst salad I've ever had in my life he goes it's unbelievable it's strong come on it's, it's really huge you should eat it I go it's terrible so I got it to go and we left. He ate all his Brontosaurus burgers. <laughs> so we're walking back, and in front of a church is a homeless, one-eyed, skinny, shivering woman. And she's out there surely like this. And uh, we walk by, and I go, oh, I'm going to give her the food. <clears throat> so I walked up to her. I go, excuse me, ma'am. And she goes, yes. I go, we had just went to a restaurant, and I have some food left over. I'd like to give it to you. And she goes, okay. So I give her the bag, and she looks at the name of the restaurant. She goes, Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> Not for me. And I said, Epstein, wow. this woman is starving. See? She has one eye. Oh. She's shivering to death, and she will not eat the food. Well, I'm glad we bleeped out the name of the restaurant. Yeah. Oh, my oh, yeah. goodness. They would not want to hear that. No, you can't do that. <laughs> right. Exactly. 
All right, how can people see, uh, you mentioned it, let's wrap it up with Tales from the Gutenberg Bible. Where can they get tickets? Yes. You're here for another week, right? Yeah, we're here for two more weeks. Two more weeks. Uh, Tales from the Gutenberg Bible is playing at the George Street Playhouse in New Brunswick. You go on georgestreetplayhouse.org. Please come. You'll have a ball. we got standing ovations every night. People are laughing, and they're they're feeling, and they're it's sensitive. It goes to your heart. It goes to your funny bone. We're also going to be at the Bay Street Theater in Sag Harbor in August. So come out there, too, and, and, and take a look. <clears throat> it's a really great show with a great cast and uh, three wonderful other actors, uh, uh, Kareen Montrabant, Dan Dominguez, and Arnie Burton. Great actors. Wow. Looking forward Steve to Gutenberg, it. Thank Emily you. Smith yes. in the building. Yeah. Thank you guys. And Gracie. And Gracie. And Gracie Gutenberg. And Gracie Allen. Thank you for Gracie coming Allen. in. 106.7 FM.